Alfa Romeo, they sold maybe 13,000, 14,000 cars last year. Not that many cars. They got like 180 dealers or something. It's a very limited thing like it's always been. But you gotta understand one thing about this Alfa. It's got a German automatic transmission in it. It's a ZF8 speed. One of the best transmissions out there. So the one thing that's the absolute worst on any Italian car ever made were their horrible automatic transmissions. Because of course the Italians, hey, speed, we want to go fast. And they got standard trannies, manual, and the real race ones. The guy that really want to drive them around want the manual transmissions. And their automatic transmissions, including Fiat and Alpha, ugh, they're absolute garbage. This is a ZF. It is an excellent transmission. They sell like three and a half million of those trannies worldwide. Some of the Jeeps have them. You see them all over the place. And they are excellent transmissions. So you can take that off your checklist. You don't have to worry that it's a crappy Italian transmission. It's made by Germans. Under the hood of this one, it's a four-cylinder engine. Now, it's also turbocharged. You see, there's a lot of working room on it. And believe you me, if you're gonna buy one of these things, don't mess with the V6 engines. They're terrible. They fall apart. These four-cylinder engines, if you baby them, now these guys really baby it. They just changed the oil at like 1,300 miles. They are taking care of this thing. They're really taking care of it. And they're not driving them, like I said, maybe 3,000 miles a year. And in that case, hey, it could last some time because it doesn't have that many miles on it yet. Just like the slingshot, it's a sometimes driver, right? You don't buy this thing and drive it 30,000 miles a year, right? And you don't buy the Alpha and drive it 30,000 miles a year either unless you want endless money pit bills. Things will start breaking. Now the tranny won't because it's well made. The engine certainly would. And to give you an example, this headlight went back. It worked, but that automatic following didn't work. They had a warning light. Now these guys are smart. They pay for this extended warranty. They didn't want to fix it, but they went to another place and they got to fix it. Okay, so replacing this headlight, 2,300 bucks. And this isn't like my wife's matrix where you could go aftermarket, get a pair of beautiful ones for 60 bucks. It looks the same, you know? These things are expensive. Plus they had to wait a month for it to come from Italy. I guess it was on a slow boat from Italy. It's a car, so it's a good looking car. They always make good looking stuff. And as you can see inside, of course it's got Leather seats, nice interior. I know, that's a beautiful looking car. There's no arguing that. A lot of room in the back seat. It's got a push button start, so let's check it out. No, he hasn't messed with the exhaust, so it's a pretty tame exhaust. Got the ZF H speed automatic. Of course, it's got the giant paddle shifters too, if you want to shift it yourself. And being a ZF, Austrian transmission. They shift great with those paddle shifters. It's not like some of these American ones that you shift them, you wait, there's a lag, they don't accelerate. This is just like a standard transmission. It shifts quick. If you want to play around with the shifting or you want to leave it the way it is, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It's a four cylinder engine, but since it's got the turbocharger on it, it puts out 280 horsepower and 306 pound feet of torque. So it's a very zippy little four cylinder engine. It goes zero to 60 in 5.4 seconds. So it's got plenty of oomph. Now that does it in 4.9, but you don't get doors or anything. Plus, here's the funny thing. It gets better gas mods than this thing does. You got 29 miles a gallon driving from Jersey to Rhode Island here, right? And they're going 75 miles an hour, all right? If I drove that slingshot 75 miles an hour, I have 16 miles a gallon. I'm not making this up. And if you rev it up high, it gets about four. It's not a gas mileage machine, it's a toy for driving around. And they actually paid about $10,000 less than this. <laughs> so, really, it wasn't that expensive. The thing you gotta worry about Italian cars is the maintenance, and this is so low mileage. This reminds me of the Audi I shot a couple years ago, where the guy went out and bought a used V6 diesel Audi, right? And they are extremely expensive to maintain. But he bought it with like 20,000 miles on it. And his friend that he went to high school with was an Audi mechanic who only charged 50 bucks an hour to work on a car in a weekend. If you're gonna take a gamble like that and you're not putting many miles on, think about buying one of these if you really wanted to. But if you did, everybody knows I don't like car warranties. You really probably would have to buy one with this thing with the headlights, 2,300 bucks. When things break, man, it is 
going to be expensive. And of course, the other thing is, there aren't that many guys who really know how to work on these things. You know, there's only a certain amount of dealerships out there. They've been to some of the dealerships where they treat you, they're such snobs, you know, like, oh, it's beneath us to change your oil, you know? I'm going to be changing fluids on this thing. Transmission fluid, differential fluid, and they bought the fluids and parts. Or they bought the fluids at the dealer, and it was 877 bucks for this tiny amount of parts. So, realize it's going to cost you a fortune. <laughs> If you have somebody else doing the work, that's still 877 bucks for the fluids and the parts you need to do it. So, they are not cheap cars to maintain by any stretch of the imagination. Like I say, hardly anybody really knows how to work on these things. They just don't. It's such a small market that they have on them. I mean, I see Fiat. Obviously, they're going to pull out of the United States. I mean, 300 something dealers and they sold 500 cars last year. These, eh, they sold thousands of them. And there's about half the amount of dealers for Alfa Romeos. There's always a market for luxury cars. Certain people like them, they like Italian cars. Alfa Romeos have been going by the skin of their teeth for decades and they're still going, you know? They didn't say whether they're going to make electric cars or not, but I'm sure they'll probably make electric cars like everybody else, jump on the bandwagon. But let me tell you something, the last thing in the world I'd buy would be an Italian electric car. That's their downfall, their electric systems. And if they're completely electrical, Poo -hoo. I wouldn't be buying one, I'll tell you that. Now here's the trunk, it opens, but when we push the button to close it, as you can see, we will watch it. It's not going to close it the whole way. See the gap? And when he's driving, it tells him the trunk isn't closed. So, you just manually pick it up and push it down, and then it's closed. For all this money, it should work, but then again, it is an Italian car, it's going to have quirks, right? Hey, we're going to tempt fate here. We are going to scan this thing to see what it's like electronically. All right, scan tool's doing its thing. Trying to auto detect it. Unable. Uh, yeah. Well, unfortunately, this can't connect because the data link connector's kind of broken here. So, we're going to try a scan tool, see if we can fit one in there. I got to be real careful because that plug is wiggly, but I finally got this one to work because it's got a smaller plug. You can see there's no powertrain or freeze frame so let's go to enhance data alpha romeo enhance data enter it yes it knows what it is four cylinder two liter and here we go now it's got a code for driver's door switch it's a jar well it is <laughs> what do you know you know <laughs> that's the only problem it's found got a lot of data okay we'll start her up and here we go. Short term fuel trim is 0%, which is perfect. Condition timing's good. Mass air flow sensor's good. And the equivalence ratio isn't bad. One is perfect. This is 1.002, then 0 0.9917. So it's actually running quite well. Close to perfect. Control module voltage is good. Like I say, here's the equivalent ratio 1.006. It was 1.005. There it goes again. 1.000 is perfect, so it's only off a few thousands there. Shows you the turbo charge, the wastegate, how it's working, the service reset here. You want the service reset? <laughs> Isn't that typical? It's Italian. There are no oil reset procedures available for this vehicle. We're going down the road, we'll go like 20 miles an hour, and we'll see what it's like on these bumpy Rhode Island roads here. Now it's an Italian car, it should ride pretty well, and it takes the bumps quite well. You don't feel them much at all. It's, it's got a good suspension system. Now it's raining today, so we're gonna leave it dynamic for traction control. He's a conservative driver. He's not like me. <laughs> it gets up and goes. A little four cylinder engine. Hey, look, this thing goes. You really wouldn't think that it's a four cylinder engine, but it is a turbo and it is at ZF8 speed. Smooth shifting, great power band, and yet it still gets good gas miles. You almost got 30 miles a gallon coming in, and that's something for a car that's this fast. So if you were like me and wondering why do people buy these things? Well, they're really zippy. They handle really well. They're very smooth. There's no arguing that. Right, they are screen to drive. And as the owner just mentioned, this thing has complete traction in the rain. Hey, it didn't slide or slip at all in the rain. It's been raining for 12 hours here. The roads are soaking wet. It does handle really well. Now, it's a beautiful looking car, like most Italian things are. It's a little four cylinder engine if you really take care of it. It does have a lot of power in it. It is an Italian car. I would not buy one, but these guys are happy with what. This has got the 392 V8 engine in it. We look inside. It's got the German HP, the four wheel drive system. It's nice and sturdy here. It's not one of these you push your little buttons. It's 
It's mechanical up here. There's a lot of stuff you can play with. The sway bars, off-road, front, rear, rear only. Bunch of auxiliary power-offs. And as you can see here, being that it's a brand new one, it's got four-wheel high, four-wheel part-time, neutral, and four-wheel low. He bought it because he wants something he can drive anywhere. And he's old enough and smart enough that he's not going to waste his time destroying his Jeep doing burnouts. Because let's face it, what young kid has 80 grand burning a hole in his pocket unless he's got a rich daddy? <laughs> I'm sure there's some of them out there. You might wonder why people pay that kind of money for a Jeep. They used to be really cheap when I was a kid, but this is an off-road ready vehicle. That's why this particular one is so expensive. This thing is seriously set up for off-roading right off of the factory. You don't have to do anything to it. Now you know the crazy people are gonna go hog wild and throw all kinds of crap. You don't need to. He said he's probably gonna go bigger wheels. You go off-road, that's probably a pretty good idea. Wrap it to save the paint and stuff. This is a off-road, totally capable vehicle as it stands now. A real Jeep, you can fold the windshield down. You can pull the doors off, put side doors, have no doors. And it's got the real spare tire on the back like a Jeep is supposed to. Various levels. All kinds of room, all kinds of seats too. I like the older Jeeps. Ah, here's covered, but these are pretty comfortable vehicles for riding around in. This is his everyday driver. If you want a big laugh, I've taken my wife for rides in many Jeeps. A few years ago, I took her, she said, don't ever take me another one of these things. They ride like a washing machine. I hate them. Well, I took her for a ride in one of these. She said, wow, it really rides good now. I said, they've changed quite a bit. You get something for that $80,000. It's not like you're getting yourself an old Willys bounce around Jeep that goes 50 miles an hour. <laughs> Now, one interesting thing you'll find is, now there's a speedometer, it goes to 120 miles an hour. But the vehicle only goes 99, and why? With that big engine? Because it's a Jeep. Do you really think this thing is aerodynamic at 130 miles an hour? <laughs> I had a customer bring me their truck that had the Hellcat set up on it. It had 750 horsepower. Now, if that thing was allowed to go full speed, you would kill yourself in a pickup truck. It had various speed limitations. Only that one was when you started it up, there was a little computer. And when the guy had his son drive it, he'd put it in a mode that it could only go a certain speed and have a certain amount of acceleration. And then he had a secret code that he never told his son that he put it in when he could drive it as fast as he wanted to. So this already has it built in at 99. And believe me, it's plenty fast enough in a Jeep. Let's look under the hood. After the various fasteners are taken off, there's security on everything here. Okay, here is a giant V8 engine. As you can see, don't worry about this, but <laughs> you're always gonna get a little bit of corrosion on any aluminum part when they sit around for a while. And anyways, this thing lives in Massachusetts, so all that stuff's gonna get flaky like that eventually. It doesn't mean anything. As you can imagine, it's relatively tight because it's V8 engine. Then sixes and then V6s and now they got these big old V8s in it. So let's start her up. Well, you can hear that nice sounding V8. You better have some money though. It gets 12 to 14 miles a gallon. It's a Jeep. It's got a big engine. Nothing sounds like the V8 engines in these things. The dual exhaust. Now as we get inside, comfy bucket seats and the Rubicon. It's less than the door. Nice and solid. You can take the top off. You can take everything off if you want. 2023, so hey. You're gonna have everything you want on your touch screen. You got your media up here, many oxes. Of course, it's got power windows. Everybody's got power windows these days. Nice setup. It goes with the Jeep. Really nice dial. The RPM on one side, but I'm on the other. He's only got 2265. He just bought it. And we're gonna take it for a little spin and we'll see how it rides compared to the old ones. Yeah, I'll put it in reverse. Nice backup camera. Pretty wide angle. Good color, too. You can see my grass is starting to get green. <laughs> it's a good view. I like this camera. It's got a pretty good setup on it. You can see the wiggles as you wiggle the wheel. It gives you a pretty good idea. This is why I won't run into my neighbor's tree. I'll see it. <laughs> People keep running into his tree backing out of this driveway. You can see why. See, as we're turning, there's the tree. It's still green. Now, every time I've driven one of these 8 HP trannies, I really liked it. Quiet, it's talking to me. <laughs> Volume off there. Now we don't have to listen to it. Now you can just listen to me. Here we go. 
you can't even feel that thing shift. Eight speed, high performance, made in Germany transmission. They're fantastic transmissions. You can see, well, he drove on a highway here, so he got a whopping 14 miles a gallon. Well, here come all the people. We better turn our headlights on because it's raining outside. Nobody's coming the other way. We'll give it a little gas. Man, this thing goes. Woo! You got a Jeep with this big old V8 engine, man. When you step on the gas. Oh, and the sound. It's phenomenal. What a toy! And if you want to play around, we can put it in manual. We'll shift it to manual. And then we got a little paddle shifters here. Here we are in second gear. Give it a little gas. Man, that thing goes. These 8 HPs in manual mode, man, they shift like an actual transmission. There's no gap, there's no lap, there's no jerking. You can really have fun driving it with these paddle shifters. So you can be lazy and put it in drive too to long. Of course, even now when you step on the gas, it gets up and goes. Woo! And we're hitting the bumps now. It really rides quite well. This is a very bumpy road. Rhode Island is known for the worst roads in the nation. They get voted top number one of the worst roads in the nation almost every year. But hey, this hits them. Not a bad ride at all, considering you're driving in a jacked up Jeep with a V8 engine and four wheel drive. Whee! Hey, I'd just go on and on. I wouldn't make videos, wouldn't do anything. Just drive around, listen to that sound all day. Forget the radio. Turn that radio off. Listen to the car. I'd be happy just listening to the exhaust sound on this thing all day long. And it's not outrageously loud. It's not like it's ear splitting. It's got that V8 nice rumble to it. We go over the bumps, really. It rides quite well. And I slip traction. It's got radar cruise. This thing is a load of fun. Yeah, it's expensive, but hey, fun's expensive these days. You know? I can certainly understand why they have it speed limited to 90 something miles an hour. <laughs> We're going to see what shape is in it. It's a 2016. The guy bought it used and he paid less than 20 for it with about 25,000 miles. So you might think, eh, how did he do that in this coronavirus? Everybody's jacking prices up. Well, he made kind of a smart decision. And outside all the challenges pretty much look the same. Classic muscle car, but it's a 3.6 liter V6 engine in it. Now, same thing with Mustangs. If you want to get a used one and you're not a maniac, get the V6 engine. Because the guys that get the V8s, they rag the heck out of them. I've seen guys blow engines in the V8s with 15, 18,000 miles because they're just revving the hell out of them. If you're looking at one like him, if this thing would have had a V8 engine in it, there's no way he could have touched it for 20 grand with 25,000 miles on it. No way. Everybody wants the V8s, and so that's where the money goes. It looks the same. It's got plenty enough horsepower to get itself around, but you don't have to pay the big bucks. He's been driving this thing relatively hard. He's got 52,000 miles. So we're going to stick my old computer and take a look, see what's happening inside. So we'll push a little button and we'll turn that down and we'll do a diagnostic. Oh, and you can see the inside is nice. I mean, check out the steering car, black and chrome. And it's got the automatic and manual shift if you want to shift it manually. Now, it's got an automatic transmission that's eight speed. This particular one doesn't have any particular problems with it. And it's good enough for that horsepower, but it really wouldn't hold up if you had 700 something horsepower. Can handle 305 horsepower. Like I said, it couldn't handle 700, but nobody's souping these things up that much. They're only souping up the V8s, which is another reason you might buy one of these. There's less things to go wrong. You notice there's a seat. They had a three year old girl in the back. And strangely enough, his wife is the one who found this car for him. She likes it. Most women do not want their husbands to have a muscle car, especially with a three-year-old kid, but hey, she picked it up for him. Now, she got all the information, so we'll do a diagnosis. Auto scan, and here we go. Yeah, and you can see a nice big tax, pedometer, cruise control, stereo control, light intensity. We get to the middle. You can have regular, you can have sport, you can turn the traction control off. Well, it's done now. You can see there's a few codes, so we'll start out with the BCM. Read the codes, and let's see what codes are popping up. Body control module. Low beam control, circuit short to battery. The control, but the lights work fine. And humidity sensor module. Well, we'll erase those stupid codes. I don't think we really need the humidity sensor. <laughs> Oh, we'll go on. HVAC system's got a code. And that's a notorious problem on these. They have a problem 
inside the dash for all the modes. They, they got a problem in there, so we'll see what this one is. It's probably the same that they always have. Right, temperature door travel too large. Yeah, and it makes a little noise in there, but it still works. Ah, uh, we'll check the rest of the stuff. Integrated center stack. Let's see what that code is. Integrated center stack button stuck. Again, it's stuff in the dash. He knows about that. Erase that. And the last code is the driver's door module. Problem when you have all this computerized crap, you get codes that you don't really care about. Hall switch is stuck. You really don't care about that either? We'll erase that. Start her up. And we'll look at some live data. Voltage is fine. Transmission data is good. Ignition system's good. This is a modern car. It's got intelligent battery sensor systems on it. It may look like an old Challenger, but it is completely computerized. Fuel trims are normal. Everything seems okay, so let's take it for a spin. Now, if he drives 80, 90 miles on a highway, he gets 21 miles a gallon. Try that with a Hemi V8. You'll probably get three miles a gallon or something so the v6 engines they got plenty enough power but they're gonna get you better gas mileage too he's a lot bigger than me so i'm moving the seat up and we'll put it in reverse and back we go notice that idle smooth as can be it's a smooth idling car you don't need a big v8 to get a smooth idle we're gonna go slow over the bump we don't want to drag anything and here we go you know it's a pretty quiet car too guys with the hemis put loud exhaust want to make a lot of noise this is a lot quieter peaceful car but when you want to go it'll go you can see it's in traction control sport now i push the button so I'll have a little more zip. And of course, it is a muscle car on these bumpy roads in Rhode Island. You're going to feel the bumps. It's not a luxury car. It is a muscle car. We're zooming around it. And as we wait for the traffic to clear, it is officially lunchtime. So there's going to be a lot of people we're going to have to wait for. Although there is a stoplight over there. So we're just coming. Here we go. We'll give it some gas. Certainly doesn't throw you back in the seat like the Hemi, but it's got plenty of pickup. Smooth shifting, eight speed transmission. It's handled its mileage quite well. It still shifts like a dream. And it's got 50 something thousand miles on it now. Fun car to drive around and hey, it's a nice looking car, turns head. I'm just amazed that his wife actually picked it up. Most women with three year old daughters are not gonna help their husband get themselves a Dodge Challenger. Be it a V6 though. Step on the gas, see what it does. Say, it's got plenty of pickup, but it gets you where you're going, and it's a lot of fun to drive. Plus, you're gonna get a lot better gas mileage, you have cheaper insurance, and you'll pay a ton less for one of these used with a six cylinder instead of the eight because all the race boys want the big Hemi V8 and they want to get one that puts out 750 horsepower. 305 isn't enough for them, so we'll put the traction control back on again, make it back to normal driving. So yes, it isn't the hell raising 750 horsepower crazy Hemi engine which is probably a good thing because it's got plenty of get up and go with 300 and high five horsepower but you're not going to get in trouble as easily believe me I drove a 765 horsepower one back in Tennessee and it scared the bejesus out of me because it just had so much power what a lot of people don't understand is tires have to do with you're driving an awful lot. These are street tires, they work fine. If you have 750 horsepower or more, you really need racing tires. Because if you don't, that 750 plus horsepower, it's just going to be spinning your tires. You're going to be losing traction. You're going to have all kinds of problems with it. Some of it is just overkill. This is not overkill. It felt totally controllable at full acceleration. And I had turned off the traction control, so that wasn't working anymore. And I had no problems at all. If it had been 765 horsepower or more, now if I turned that off, I would have gone on a different road. I got on one that wouldn't have any traffic on it, and then I wouldn't care if I was sliding a little here or a little there. But this is totally controllable, and it looks exactly the same as the V8s. It's just a different engine under the hood. Now, he put these nice New Englander tires all season, and he said he used them in the winter. It doesn't ride good in the winter anyways, because it's a muscle car that's rear wheel drive. It's going to spin around. You know that's what's going to happen. And, of course, you did get a black car, so all the bird poop's going to show up. So there we have it, a Dodge Challenger. Fun to drive not horrible on gas got it a lot cheaper than you would have ever gotten a v8 engine and it's still 305 horsepower is a lot of power so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell